we can move on to the fourth uh, speaker, which is from Massachusetts, USA, 4.30 in the morning. Are you ready to go? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Would you care to share your uh, presentation slide, please? Yeah. Of course, I have the question. Uh, so you are talking about stock market, of course, at the end, I'm going to ask you, should I buy Apple uh, today <laughs> before the market opens Friday? Okay, so that's going to be my question. Apple, whatever, okay, Tesla. Please uh, go ahead, sir. Please go ahead. Thanks, Dr. Wang. My name is Bharatendra Rai from Charton College of Business, UMass uh, Dartmouth. And this presentation is developing a multi-model machine learning framework for daily stock prediction. So I know like a lot of people have interest in the stock market and they want to get some ideas and all that. So I think it will interest those people who like to make some money from the stock market. So I have been with the Charton College of Business at UMass Dartmouth for several years now, almost 20 years. And I have been investing in the stock market for 20 years also. Very quickly, my outline is uh, I'll talk about the trading signals, technical indicators and the response that I'm looking at. And uh, today's focus will be using one of the machine learning models called Random Forest. I will just focus on that, keeping in mind over time, and then uh, do a comparison between Tesla, Apple and NVIDIA, which are like uh, very hot currently. So this is for Tesla. So there are a lot, lot of ups and downs. And also, even just looking at the chart, you can see sometimes there are some kind of trends. When it is going up, it continues to go up. When it starts going down, it continues to go down. And uh, recently, especially after uh, Trump's uh, win, Tesla actually spiked to all-time high, but also very quickly pulled down. So a lot of ups and downs for Tesla. If you look at Apple, it has been a consistent like upward trend for last so many years. If you look at this chart, which is from 2018, uh, beginning of 2018 till now, there are ups and downs, but it continues to go up ultimately. And NVIDIA really took off uh, in 23. So some, from somewhere here, it has just skyrocketed to become uh, the most valuable company actually almost $3 trillion market cap. With these charts, uh, there are uh, many, many people or many investors who approach it uh, from technical indicators point of view. But the key thing is there are so many different types of uh, technical indicators. It is very difficult to keep track of each and every indicator. So on this chart, I have a very simple moving average, red one and blue one. Red one is 200-day moving average and the blue one is 25-day, which moves uh, much closer to the actual stock price. And typically, a buy signal is when the short run SMA crosses from below to above. Like this point here, 2024 July, at some point, uh, this blue line crossed this red line from below. And after that, uh, within a few weeks, it rose to almost like all-time highs. And sell signal is usually based on SMAs. When short-run SMA crosses from above to below long-run SMA, when it does that, like you can see this point here, then it continues to go down. Or if you look at this point here, it falls drastically after that. To answer like Dr. Wang's question, like if I'm looking at this point, like today or more recent time, and the blue line is almost tr trying to cross red one. So that will make uh, investors who look at these technical indicators very bullish. And they expect uh, this is going to continue up. And there's no wonder that some people are calling for like uh, $600 target by end of 2025. Kathy Wood, a big investor, and uh, she is uh, targeting almost 2,600 uh, by 2030. Some people like to look at what is called Bollinger Bands. So things move within this band, 1.5 standard deviation up and down. And when it starts to move along with the upper line, so that is a bullish indicator. And when it crosses the middle line and falls down, 
towards the lower band. So that is an indicator that uh, one should sell. That's a very quick background about uh, technical indicators with some simple ones. So, so what we did here is we took, uh, we took several technical indicators, in fact, 36 of them. There are some uh, indicators which are related to trend going up or down. And then there are some related to momentum. And then there are some uh, indicators related to volatility. So instead of focusing on just one or two, we thought uh, if we create a machine learning model based on so many, like three dozen, and then we get some uh, ideas that may help to come out with some system. What we created is this YT, which is uh, our response variable for these machine learning models. And we have three categories, up, down, and neutral. The idea is based on all the data and all the analysis, we look at uh, previous five days for all 36 indicators and then try to predict what will happen next day. Will the market go up, down, or it will remain in a in certain range? And the way we are calculating up is, so this is a percentage, so 100 times CT. So CT is the closing price on a given day. And then MN is the moving average for last five days. If this uh, percentage is more than T, so T is the threshold and we define that again in a percentage. So basically it is a percentage move. It could be 0.5%, 1% move, 1.5% or 2% move. So the historical data basically is labeled using uh, this process as up, down or neutral. The reason like why we are not, not trying to predict actual stock price, but these categories is there are a lot of uh, investors who try to develop algorithms that can be used for uh, trading. And usually like these kind of decisions are easier when you have the categories. If you know it is going to go up, then you invest. If you know it is going to go down, then you pull out. We pulled data from 2018, January. And with different thresholds, so obviously number of data points will be different. So if you look at Tesla, which is a very volatile stock, and if your threshold is at 0.5%, you see there is a very limited data points within neutral, only 144 and 862 and 726 up and down. So they are not like evenly distributed here because it is a very volatile stock. But if you look at 2%, then more or less you can see 640, 540, 552, more balanced data points. Apple may not have like same amount of uh, volatility like Tesla. That's why you will see that when you go to 2%, then more than 1000 data points are within plus minus 2%. So we don't want to create a machine learning model based on this situation where the data itself is unbalanced. Running a random forest is very straightforward and most of the programs will do it very quickly. It runs very fast. And uh, this data set, even with 36 features and uh, six years of data, it will run quite fast. So very quickly, what happens with the random forest model is we use the training data. So for me, training data is from 2018 till end of 2024. From this uh, original training data, we create 500 different data sets using Bootstrap, where we use a random sampling with replacement. So each uh, data is actually different. And using that, we create uh, different tree models. Each split, it uses the random sample of variables. So it draws its name, this random, in the random forest from something like this. And once we have 500 trees or the forest uh, with 500 trees created, then we take the majority vote as a final prediction, whether it is up, down, or neutral. So that's the idea. Once we run the model, this is the result we get. Obviously, this is based on the test data. You can see there were 125 days when Tesla was down and this random forest model correctly predicted the next day that it will be down. 69 times uh, it correctly predicted uh, it will be neutral and 129 days up. So those are the correct predictions. 
But then there are a lot of incorrect predictions also, like 57 times the model thought that it will go down, but it remained neutral. So accuracy is only 60%. But if you look at sensitivity, it is doing a better job for predicting when it will go down on the next day. Correctly predicting this down 125 is actually 73%. And neutral is only 39%, less than 40% correct for neutral and less than 74 up. One drawback that people point to for machine learning models is that it's like a black box and doesn't explain things. So we try to come out with the, these kind of charts that can explain any prediction. So you pick up a prediction for, let's say Friday, actually the markets are about to open. So you want to make a prediction and your prediction says that it is likely to be neutral then this chart will tell us what are the top indicators that are helping to make this prediction that it is neutral. Blue ones indicate that it is supporting and red ones indicate that it is going against uh, those predictions. I have like uh, six different days of charts. In this case, it is down and it says like which variables are contributing to pull this prediction down. Comparing uh, these three companies, so first of all, we always are interested in finding out what are the important actually technical indicators supporting these machine le learning models. So one thing I see is X25, which is ROC. So that's the top feature for predicting when it goes down as well as when it goes up. That's true for Tesla as well as for Apple, also for NVIDIA. X25 is definitely like anybody following this chart should also focus on Another one is uh, X11, which is CCI, which captures the trend. And one thing you'll notice is uh, out of four, three of them are momentum indicators. Once they start showing some kind of momentum in the upward direction, so they continue to go up a lot. And same thing for down. So as I mentioned earlier, for Tesla, I use plus minus 2% as a threshold. For Apple, 1% and NVIDIA, 1.5%. So that three categories are balanced. And you can see, although accuracy is 60, 48, and 47, highest for Tesla and lowest uh, for NVIDIA. For all the three companies, actually, they are struggling in the neutral category because these are momentum stocks. It is much easier to actually predict when they will go down and uh, slightly better compared to neutral when they may go up. For down, Apple and NVIDIA, they have like almost 90%. So once they fall, they are likely to fall a lot. In this case, we have used three companies which have like put together their market cap is uh, more than majority of the countries on earth. There are not many countries with this kind of uh, GDP. So we used a random forest to classify one day ahead stock price movement as up, down and neutral. Also used explainable machine learning to explain individual predictions, which is very helpful when somebody or investor tries to dig deeper, like just saying that, okay, it is likely to go down, but why? What are the reasons or which variables are going to play an important role? So that also is very useful. And then we assessed model performance using accuracy and sensitivity. And uh, as I mentioned, this is in progress. Thanks for a very patient listening. And just I wanted to point out anybody interested in our programming or machine learning that I've used. I also have a channel at BKRI. Okay, so thanks very much. Thank you, thank you. Sounds very interesting. <laughs> I I wish I know about these insights uh, a few years ago. I would have avoided some loss and have made some more money. <laughs> thank you very much.